as we have already done the installation of SQL Server and have also seen the basics of data types. Now let's get started with the implementation. In this video, we will see how we can open, connect with the SQL Server and we'll see how can we create a new database, can create a table and how to enter the data in the table. And we will do everything in the GUI mode. In order to start working with the SQL Server, first of all, we will have to open the Management Studio. For accessing that, you'll have to come to the Start menu and here you can find the SQL Server Management Studio. Apart from that, you can also come to run and type SSMS that is SQL Server Management Studio and as soon as you will say OK it will open the Management Studio for us. As soon as it is open here you can see the server type that is database engine and apart from that we are getting some more services but as in the environment setup we have discussed about the server type where we chose the database engine only we'll continue with that. After that it is server name while the installation I have chosen the default instance where the default instance name was MS SQL Server. So after this server name I don't have to pass anything. But if you have chosen the named instance so right after this machine name or the server name by after putting these backslash you will put the instance name that is any instance name which you have given. By default it is SQL Express but here I don't have to pass anything. Apart from that as far as the authentication is concerned I have a couple of options that is the Windows authentication and SQL Server authentication. Windows authentication is simply an OS authentication which will take the user credentials from the user who's logged into this Windows. Make sure that it is the user who has installed the SQL Server or you have added into the admin group to that particular user. So as this is the user for me that is tutorials point that is the system name and tutorials space point that is the user name who has installed the SQL Server in this machine. So I can simply say connect and here I'll be connected as the administrator. Here you can see the object explorer on the top of which I am getting a disconnect button. I am log logging out again and when I click to connect this time I will go for the SQL Server authentication where it will ask the username and password from me and as the, in the installation time we have chosen the mixed mode which means the SQL Server authentication and Windows authentication both will be applicable. So here in SQL Server authentication uh, the default username is SA that is the system administrator and the password you will have to enter the same password which you have entered by the time you have installed this SQL Server. Now let's say connect so as you can see now it is being connected as the SA. Make sure in both the ways you will be connected as the administrator so any authentication will not be a problem means you will be able to do whatever the thing you want to do. You are authorized to do each and everything right here. Now, after this, before getting started with writing a queries, what we have to do is, first of all, we'll have to create a database and then we will create some tables and we'll put some data into it so that we will be good to start with the queries. Here in SQL Server since it is a Microsoft product and like many other products Microsoft has designed it quite beautifully that you can create the database tables and can put the data quite easily which we are going to see just now. So here you can see a database I will simply right click over it and will say new database. So what you can do you can give any name here like first db alright and uh, it will create a couple of files for you one is the data file in which the major data would be stored and log file in which the recent DMLs that is whatever the insertion updation you will do will be written and here is the location of the database so let's say OK without making any changes and inside this database as you can see first DB is created if I will expand the tree of this first DB you will get a different options but initially we will focus only on the tables where we can create the 
structure we can store the data and then later we can make the queries as well so in order to create the table I will right click over the table and will say a table and as soon as I will do that I will get this screen which will ask me the column names which I want to be there in a particular table the data types in which we will tell which particular type of data I want to store and allow nulls by default you can enter a null in any particular column but if you will check that that means you are allowing and if it will be unchecked it means you are not allowing a null to be there so let's take an example like here I'm creating a field like student ID and I want the student ID to be numeric non decimal numeric so I will simply say integer I don't want any null there so I will keep it unchecked now similarly first name I want the varchar data type would be there so there is a varchar and will pass any particular size maximum 20 characters can be taken from this particular column if you want allowed nulls you can but for the first name I am not allowing any null similarly last name again I will say varchar 20 and I will allow a null out there similarly email ID varchar 50 mobile number I will say care since mobile number I am making it fixed to 10 digits I will make it care 10 the reason I am not taking the numerical values because I am not going to do any arithmetic calculation with the mobile number or I don't want to put any decimals as well so I am just taking it the character similarly if you will say gender I will say care 1 where I will expect only either M or F in that particular column similarly date of birth for such particular columns what I will have to do is I will have to take something like the date type so here I will have the date data type which I can take by default it will take YYYYMMDD format that is years months date similarly fees if you want fees to be there as a decimal value you can simply put it like numeric data type in the numeric what you will do like for example 6 comma 2 that means out of 6 2 will be the decimal places and 4 digit data should be allowed to before the decimal and course ID where I will take the ID of a particular course and will create a separate table for the courses now let's save put this particular table and before saving this what I can do I can place a primary key for the student ID we will discuss about all these constraints later but in short I can say this student ID is the unique common feature for all the students which will neither be duplicate nor be null so I'll put a primary key right here and will save it like TBL underscore students or student master or whatever you want to put now I have saved a table successfully and now if I'll come inside you can see a TBL students if you are unable to see that just right click here and say refresh you will be able to see now if you want to enter some details for this student what you can do is you can simply right click over this and say edit top 200 rows as soon as I will click on that you will get a full fledged structure of the table which I just created for example 101 is the student ID Anadi is the first name Sharma is the last name Anadi at tutorialspoint.com is the email ID mobile number it's just random number any contact number all right now uh, gender M date of birth let's take any fees let's say 1000 course ID let's say 10 whatever course so this is how 
column wise you can keep entering the data for the saving of some time I have already created one more database right here called MyDB inside which I have created four tables that is the countries, location, departments and employees. Country is a very small table inside which I have added some countries which will give the list of some few, few countries I have used in my database like 1, 2, 3, India, USA, UK. Similarly, on the, those particular countries I will have some locations where maybe my company office would be there. So in the location tables I have entered the location ID to 1 to 7, different city names and the country ID. Make sure these are the country IDs that means 1 for India, 2 for USA, 3 for UK and here you can see 1, 2, 3 only. Alright. So in such particular way we will retrieve the data which I will discuss later. After that I have a departments table right here inside which I have used the department ID different departments name like HR, IT, engineering, sales, marketing, customer support along with the location ID. Location ID is similarly these cities which I have entered here and finally there is an employee who would be working in these departments. So for now these are blank because we will be starting with the single table retrieval only by the time we will start retrieving the data from the multiple table or across the multiple tables we will discuss those scenarios as well. So this is how before getting started with writing the query make sure you have created a good database and at least a good table with some handsome amount of columns and rows so that you will be able to write a logical queries. In the next chapter we'll start working with some implementation of the SQL Server Select Statement.